I'm going to commit all of my time that I have on stage to utterly and completely boring you. I'm so committed to doing this that I changed our pedestrian unlocking the value of AI title and changed it to making AI boring because if any of us had the ambition to unlock the value of data, we're likely exploring AI to get that done. And I hope to make an argument that you find convincing that the only way we're going to get this done at scale is by making AI boring. And so for sure, I should have caused you a bit of a head twist when I said that. But I want you to stay with me, because there is significant power in boredom if we wield it correctly. I want you to consider, for instance, when your last major breakthrough came. Was it when you had the space to think creatively and let your mind settle? I bet you that it did. I want you to think about seminal works of art, like Scott Adams' Random Acts of Management that you might have read in order to be an extraordinary and inspiring leader. I want you to think about the last time you had to get ready for a wedding and learn to get jiggy with it by modeling behavior from YouTube. It's likely to have been catalyzed when you were bored. And so boredom is a very powerful feature of our day-to-day -day lives, but in tech, I don't think we value boredom enough. It's like the late, great Rodney Dangerfield said, boring absolutely gets no respect. And so I'm on a mission to absolutely change that. My goal in life, at least in my professional life, is to make AI boring. Let's consider what this means. I want you to imagine a future when AI is boring and consider the outcomes. It would automate the tedious work from our day-to-day -day lives. You only have to look at your calendar and see how you're spending your day to value this particular outcome. What it would mean is that people, including many that you lead, would be able to focus on work that matters. It would mean that problems are consistently and automatically resolved time and time again, which means for the customers, which for-profit institutions exist, we could deliver amazing customer experiences on any channel, no matter how our customers are interacting with us. And if it's boring, it becomes used by everyone, including the very people that technology today, unfortunately, often ignores. And so what is it going to take for us to make AI boring? It comes down to simply making it easy to build and deploy. It's easier said than done, of course, because if you consider the entire life cycle of building and deploying AI, it's a very technical domain available to those that have the strong and advanced technical skills to pull it off. And if you consider something like a customer onboarding scenario within a bank, you have dozens of models that need to be orchestrated in order for you to do this with AI. And yet, a single data scientist with the right skill will spend days, weeks, often months building a single AI model. This is a significant amount of time, significant expense, and drawing from a pool of resources that are not large. So we need to do better. The good news is many of you that are working for technology companies or contributing to open source are doing something about it. There's an abundance of options that we have at our fingertips for building AI, most of it just a couple of clicks away from Google, available in open source and in our favorite languages. And there are research and R&D labs by commercial companies like IBM that are plowing significant dollars in trying to make this just the slightest bit easier. I'm excited about three projects we have going on in IBM. Last year, we introduced a computer that could debate with humans, which is basically a computer that can reason, hear rebuttals, calibrate their argument. 
and um, by some human judges, more effective debaters than human beings on certain subject matters. There's a project that we have that just got commercialized into Watson called Watson AI. What it attempts to do is automate as much of that AI lifecycle as is possible, and we're able to take not just model build, but deploy uh, responsibilities and break it down from days and weeks to minutes and hours. But there's also an important body of work that, you, um, that was touched on earlier in the keynote about fairness. And we've introduced some algorithms that are now available for you to consume so that you could test your models for common characteristics of fairness and do something about it when it detects that there might be something amiss. But there is bad news. Despite those abundance of options for, or that abundance of options for building AI, the truth of the matter is you could build all day long models, but they need data. And if your data isn't ready, you might as well stay home, don't spend any money at all. It's just waste. We like to say that there is no AI without AI. So the question then becomes what to do about it. For an approach, we've introduced something we call the AI ladder. It's a set of architectural principles. It's a way of work. It's a set of considerations that you should be making if you're planning for AI projects related to your information architecture to ensure that not only can you train these models, but you can put them into production into the wild. Essentially, what it prescribes is a series of four steps. You need methods to collect, organize, analyze your data. And once you do that, you need methods to build, deploy, and inject these models into business critical processes. And if you have this information architecture, it does you no good if it's in limited operating environments, so you need it to run everywhere. The big bet for IBM is that we can deliver this AI ladder through a product that we introduced last year called Cloud Pack for Data. And what you could think of it as is a full data and AI stack adhering to those four critical architectural principles I enumerated through in the AI ladder that has everything you need to build and deploy AI in the wild anywhere you want to run. AWS, Azure, Google, IBM, and your own private data center. We've perfected the technology so it could be up and uh, running in minutes. In your production workloads and even in the hairiest scenarios, we can get it ready for you in less than four hours. And inside it has Watson, which serves two purposes. It's your tool chain for building, deploying, and managing AI. And it's a set of applications that allow you to have a ready-made solution for things like customer and employee care and financial crimes. So the combination of this approach and the technology we built are doing their part in helping customers deploy AI. We've got over 10,000 engagements that we're quite proud of. And this is accelerating every day, so we know we're on to something. I'm quite excited about some of the work that we did with iCure, which is allowing doctors to deliver acute care in remote regions of India because of AI, as well as, personally, uh, the fantasy football app on ESPN that lets me make sure that my roster on any particular week is going to beat the crap out of my competition. So a lot of examples. We got a lot of momentum, and you are doing your bit to help us along the way. And so. I hope I made you just the slightest bit bored. Um, and if I did, and if you found this particular argument convincing, help us make AI boring together. And if you want to understand some of the how behind the technology I was just describing, visit us in 915. Come see me at 1120. Thank you very much.